Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dutch Sheet channel. Thank you very much for tuning in for another video on this Hobson H123X4 Jet. A brushless FPV drone quadcopter racer. <laughs> yeah, so in this video we're gonna upgrade the firmware. And I originally hadn't planned on doing this video, but after flying it today, I found that uh, upgrading the firmware on this quadcopter is mandatory. The firmware that comes pre-flashed on this quadcopter is far inferior to the, to the latest firmware. And um, we're gonna upgrade it to firmware 2.1.1, so you'll have to check maybe you are one of the lucky ones that already uh, got that firmware onto the quadcopter uh, pre-flashed out of the factory, but I suspect uh, you won't. But uh, well, check it out, and if you have that firmware, uh, then uh, you can skip this video. So uh, I flew this quadcopter for the first time today, and again, it flies a lot better on that new firmware. The, uh, especially the yaw action is a lot better. So again, uh, if you get this quadcopter, it's mandatory in my mind to upgrade the firmware. Don't worry, it's not complicated. However, if you are watching this video because you have a problem flashing the firmware onto this quadcopter, don't worry, we'll fix that, we'll solve that problem. So yes, yeah, so, so uh, that uh, firmware upgrade process is not completely bug free, but it's, uh, it's not a problem. Obviously the first thing we need to do is actually download that new firmware. And you can find the new firmware on Hobson's uh, support site. I'll have a link to the support site uh, in the description of this video. And if you scroll down, 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 you'll see X4Jet H123D assistance, assistant firmware. Now, yeah, uh, the description is a bit, uh, well, nondescript, so to speak. It's actually firmware, this link, but also a configuration assistant. See, with the new firmware, you can actually change PID tuning and uh, other settings in the quadcopter. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, nonetheless, you'll have to download this over here. And there is actually also a link directly to this, it's a zip file, to this zip file in the description of this video if you don't want to browse through Hobson's site. Okay, once you have that done, you have this here a zip file on your computer, and if you extract that zip file, you have a, well, you'll have this folder. You'll see the, this upgrade tool, an EXE file. Uh, that's actually meant to flash the new firmware onto your quadcopter. And there's this setup, and that setup is uh, meant to install the configuration tool. Not needed at this point. At this point you need the upgrade tool. So we'll start that and... There is our upgrade tool and it says not connected. Right, so your Hobson quadcopter has uh, this uh, USB port on its side, right? So you will hook that up to your computer without the battery connected. So don't connect the battery, just hook it up to your computer via a USB cable and hard cheeky day. As you can see, it now says connected. Yeah, that's nice. And the next thing we need to do is select the actual firmware, which came in that same zip file. So we'll uh, open file and uh, browse to that folder. There, there, and you need that HBS file, that file, version 2.1.1. Okay, open, archie Now, here is where the shit will hit the fan. <laughs> yeah, this might be a problem you run into. See, if I now click upgrade, it'll say erase timeout, which is, uh, well, 
What does it mean? Nobody knows. It uh, kind of means uh, nothing. Uh, Hobson, if you make software, please put in real descriptive error messages. So this is what you might run into and at this point actually your quadcopter is bricked. Yeah, it won't fly anymore in this state. So how do you solve that? Well you click this OK button, yes, and then you simply click upgrade again. And as you can see we now have a progress uh, indicator, a uh, percentage and it, uh, it's pretty fast. There you go. That's all there is to it, 100%. And you will probably have to rebind your radio to the, to the quadcopter. Oh, and it also will also start beeping at this point. I don't know why, but uh, well, you can simply uh, disconnect it at this point. Your quadcopter is now done. And again, you might uh, have to rebind the radio with the quadcopter. Not a problem, it's not a complicated process and it's well documented in the manual. In fact, I did have to bind it when I took it out of the box and you probably will as well. Then there's that second program that you got uh, from that zip file, right? Setup. So what does it do? Well, it'll install a flight control assistant. You see that over here. I've already installed it, obviously, and it's a simple uh, next, next, next uh, process, so I won't uh, show that to you. And what do we actually get when we have that installed? Well, here it is. It is a pretty simple, if you will, configuration tool for your Hobson quadcopter. It's actually a general purpose uh, tool for several quadcopters from uh, from Hobson. But uh, well, okay, what you do is in this case you do have to hook up the LiPo to your to your quadcopter and then hook it up to the USB port of your computer. There. Now, the annoying thing is that your quadcopter will beep, as you can he hear, the entire time it's hooked up. And I hope uh, Hobson will solve that in a future firmware. Uh, yeah, it's a bit uh, annoying. Nevertheless, things will work. Okay, the software has already seen that I have a greenish quadcopter uh, connected over here, a small little icon. If I click connect, you don't have to by the way, but if I click connect, it'll say connection is successful over here. Okay, and all the values are still blank, right? So what you do is you request, click, et voila. Now we see all the settings of our quadcopter and um, yeah I'd say simply uh, fool around with this a little. That's what, what you learn most from but uh, well you can see that for the, the different flight modes it has different settings right and that makes sense. So here is where you can make all the, the different, the three different flight modes uh, feel like you want them to feel. That's nice. And maybe if you'd ever uh, want to replace the stock propellers, you will probably want to play around with the PID tuning because, well, the behavior of your quadcopter will then change. And once you've changed settings, you will submit them to the quadcopter and it'll write them to your quadcopter. I'll disconnect the quadcopter at this stage. So yeah, there's the annoying beeping done. Okay, and what more can I tell you? Well, that's basically it. Uh, so uh, with this new firmware, your quadcopter will fly a lot better, which is nice. And you now have the added bonus of uh, being able to change settings on your quadcopter. You don't have to, by the way. Uh, that's still a benefit of uh, a quadcopter like this from Hobson. You don't have to get into uh, uh, firmware settings and such, but you can. And that's definitely nice. Alright, that's it for this video on the Hobson H123DX4 Jet. I hope it helped you out. If you are left with questions, hit me up a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer you. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.
just want to go fast, hold on my teeth and on my neck. And I'm stone cold with the flex from the squad and I'm smoking up a check.